Okay, so this is Aaron. We're doing a summary of a video for skin fit. When was the, I was talking with your parents. Do you remember how old you were when we started? Uh, I think I was about nine. Nine, okay, I thought eight or nine. So we've known each other a long time. Um, you used to have, cause we've never done one of these videos, I don't think with you, correct? So we're doing this to try to keep up with what we do with so many different kids and then take them for case studies. I actually pre presented your case at ACPOC before um, with being able, because I think what was, what do you remember is the biggest improvement for you with this when you very first started with using skin fit versus using a gel liner? Um, with the liner, I had really bad skin irritation for a long time and we couldn't get it to go away. And then within like a week of using the skin fit, it was gone. And uh, was it harder to get that one on with a liner too, with one hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she has some upper limb involvement too, so um, it's a little harder to get on and off. And I don't know how many, you went in the first socket, how long did you get out of the very first socket? It was a while, wasn't it? I think it was about a year or two-ish, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was about two years. It was, it was you know, because you kind of tough it out with mm -hmm. stuff too, a little longer than I should. So Brooklyn had tibial hemimilia had a needless articulation, and had a lanyard suspension with a gel liner when we started uh, seven, no, wait a minute, seven years ago, eight years ago, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna say this might be our third socket. We haven't been on it a ton. Now we've mailed some that have been uh, close, not close. Uh, and we had This is the third time we've probably recasted everything to, to do everything again. So a common dilemma we run into here, when Brooklyn was much younger, she was shorter and different weight for components, but she still tore everything up. We just didn't want to put a heavy knee on. So kind of what we're changing to now is uh, going into adult components uh, for her because the last couple of knees, I'm pretty sure you've kind of torn them up, right? The other issue we run into is what's your big complaint when you leave early to go to lunch or to the next class? Um, it's loud. Yeah, the knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she she would leave a little early, I think, and be walking down the hall by herself, and a broken knee is really cling, 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 cling. So now that it makes sense to use a heavier knee, we're gonna, we are big fans of needless articulations of using uh, Oser Total Knees. Uh, this is a 1900 friction knee, but we just we ordered a hydraulic knee, should be here tomorrow. Um, and that makes that problem much better. So when adolescence comes, being able to use um, adult components with hydraulics is worth the weight that we think at that, at that point. <clears throat> and also having a walking foot is more of a uh, concern, I would say. What do you plan on using the walking foot for? Um, getting around, I don't know. Okay, what? because you use this a lot. Yeah. Do you think you'll use this a little more if you have yeah. this, so you can like wear shoes? Mm -hmm. Okay, but there was a time where this is all you wanted to use, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just there'll probably be things you'll want, I'm guessing you'll want to do. What kind of things do you think that would be? Um, you think it'd be better in school to have that? Yeah. For sitting at a desk and stuff or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see this be that you kind of hitting the desk and stuff. Man. Yeah. Um, so again, the extra weight of a foot when somebody's 50 pounds versus 150 pounds is real different. Um, so it's not a big deal now. Plus her limb is significantly stronger to hold the weight of that with skin fit. So um, I'm gonna show you how she changes this out. So it's real easy. So we're a big fans too of not having a whole different leg. We've had little, uh, had kids in high school and junior high. We've tried two separate legs, but it's kind of bulky to carry to school. So if they were to want to do an activity after school, it's kind of bulky to have a whole leg in a backpack plus your books. So versus this, it's much easier to just throw in your book bag and swap it on. So what she'll, what we can do is we have a five millimeter wrench and just loosen the set screw on the side. And this would be real easy for her. She's just gonna undo this one and slide this out. And then she can slide this one in. And that's basically all there will be to it. That right there. Have you done some running on this? Does it seem to keep up without the tennis ball? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Just as long as you're not like dead sprint. Yeah. 
but you could could you see it might be a little bit too slow if you were to run faster do you think it might be slow enough that you need the tennis ball maybe um, okay. i don't know yeah you have to test it so um, we have used uh, running blades the whole time so she did, you have eight years of experience on it so that's the reason I'm asking her because she'll know when she needs a tennis ball or not and think there's enough lotion out here to take it on and off mm -hmm. okay so she's gonna show you real quick how she gets it on and off because it's, it's really easy and I'll show you the socket design so she pushes the button gets it loose enough let's see here yeah that looks a little better right there right mm -hmm. So the flushness of the valve is a little critical. So this is a sub design. We take measurements standing up at interval locations, a loose and a tight, and have them flex the muscles. So we take one set of measurements at every interval with the limb flaccid and loose while standing. Then we take the same measurements with their limb flex. And what we look for ideally is to go down to the tightest flexed measurement and what the reason we do that is if we go tighter than the tightest flex measurement let's just say we picked a percentage uh, the percentage might not work based on their muscle contraction at that location because the muscle bellies are at different points so this formula has worked probably a hundred times so we go down to the tightest measurement of the intervals with their muscles contracted as long as that falls within the range of the flaccid measurement so that's a stance and swing modification. So when she is in stance phase, steps down, flexes all her muscles and propels herself off the blade. If it's tighter than the tightest measurement in that position, she will start to get cramps with a lot of running. Conversely, if it is too loose, meaning if we just take typically what was happening before we started this, if we just took flaccid limb measurements of standing up, the socket was not tight enough to hold on. Because when they would go into swing phase and pick their leg up, the limb was flaccid and it would break suction and come off. So that's why we had to use that cross-reference of those two points. Um, because typically in a skin fit situation, when we started doing this 10 years ago, we would just take flaccid limb measurements with them standing with the limb held down. But what we learned is that wasn't tight enough at some spots. Some spots it was tight enough, some it wasn't. And that's when we kind of had the revelation to cross-reference contracted circumferential measurements versus non-contracted circumferential measurements. So again, any questions on that, we're happy to follow up with you on that if you want to try something like that. But Nidus Arctic is the best situation to do that in. Um, and you're able to put all your weight on the end of your leg, right? So let me let this down once you stand up there and show them what we're talking about now. So just for, because this is a gold standard too, not only the interval measure, put one hand here and just see if you can pick it up. There you go. That's what I wanted you guys to see. And you don't have any discomfort with that, do you? Yeah, and she, she has um, she has her femoral condyles, but with tibia and hemimelia, they are not fully developed. So it's almost more of one large condyle. So, okay, now she's gonna show you how she slides this on. She's still got enough lubricant to use that. We're using, this lotion has been very good if they don't tolerate um, hand sanitizer. They make hand sanitizer with aloe vera. Hand sanitizer is good to use when you want a really tight, secure fit. This is good for, I think you have some skin that's kind of sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good alternative. Just gotta watch how much lotion you use because it'll clog up the valves. And you're also, if you're gonna use a system, skin is gonna have residue that's gonna get in the valve, so they're gonna to have to clean it. So we can show y'all a little bit of how she runs right down through there. Pro. 